When you walk in here, you have that feeling that you're just surrounded by music. And I think that's what people like about this space. And students have told me too that um, this is kind of an oasis for them. What's really interesting is the importance of the role of music in the lives of the MIT community, especially the students. And the music library is a central part of that. This is just an incredible space that brings together a lot of musical resources, even in the way it's laid out. Up here behind me, there's glass panels that one of the composers on the faculty, John Harbison, composed. It has been written so as to have one measure of music on every panel around the balcony. The music has been etched in John's handwriting on those glass panels. Then we get to the stairwell and the piece stops and it comes to a beautiful pause. And then it continues in the last panels. You're in the music when you come in here. It had started as a lounge. Students could come in and they'd have their lunch and just kind of relax and listen to music. And it started evolving into a, a little library. In 1996, we completely gutted the space and we added a second floor. What made it happen was Cherry's generosity. Cherry Emerson was an alum. He was a chemical engineer, and his mother-in-law, Mrs. Lewis, was an amateur musician. So Cherry Emerson thought he would like to name the library after Mrs. Lewis. And I suspect this may be unique in the history of building namings, to name a library for your mother-in-law. The sheer amount of stuff. Like, I, I'm really into Chopin. There was a section where we had literally every single piece Chopin ever wrote, and I was like, is this real? And then I looked for Bach, I looked for Mozart, I looked for some more contemporary pieces, and it seemed like every single thing that you could ever think of, Lewis has it. And if they don't, everyone here will make the utmost effort to get it here. We've kind of evolved over the years. The big attraction here used to be the turntables and the, the CD players. But we've changed a lot. We've added digital pianos. We check out Zoom audio recorders. We have digitizing equipment uh, where you can digitize an LP or an audio cassette. And we have a lot of music software. The library recently got an old crank record player to play 78 RPM records. There is the sense of, of pushing the technology in both directions to make the full spectrum available. The first floor makes a nice little concert hall. So we can move the tables away and we can set up about 50 or 60 chairs. Hi. We have a composer forum series. Next month, we're going to be doing a big hackathon where people are going to be bringing in their laptops and coding and using those resources of the library to develop new programs. There's much more emphasis now on music and technology being taught here. The first class that I developed here at MIT is called Interactive Music Systems, and it's really based on the experience that I had uh, in starting Harmonics Music Systems, the, the company that created Guitar Hero and Rock Band, and also Fantasia Music Evolved. He wanted his class to use the Xbox, and we said, well, we don't have one, but uh, we're glad to get it. That's why we're here. We're here to support the faculty. It's a music game that touches a lot of the topics that we cover in the class. How do you interact with music if you're not necessarily a musician? How can you use your hands and your body as, as the interface by which to create music. I think it's wonderful that something like playing music games can actually happen in the music library. I think it's a real testament to the flexibility of this wonderful place. One of the things we're considering is creating a studio in the library to be able to have students come in and do uh, critical listening or uh, sound mixing. We talk a lot at MIT about maker spaces and I think this is definitely one of them. 
we've had alumni who have been very, very generous in supporting the music library through our collections and also supporting digitization projects so that we can provide our collections in new and more accessible ways. The Lewis Music Library has an incredible collection of rare and in many cases unique materials. In looking at these manuscripts, the students can see where erasers have happened, where the music needed to be changed in order to accommodate changing tastes or changing styles, perhaps. The students in my seminar have been trying to recover as many of the pages as we can from collectors who might not be interested in keeping theirs and are glad to give it to MIT, where it can be um, of great service in teaching and learning. MIT's also been collecting some contemporary scores that show the way music notation is evolving even today. These are pieces that inspire the students who are composing their own works to think outside of the box. For me, what is so special about the Lewis Music Library is the sense of community in the building and, and in the space and amongst the staff that then gets transmitted to every MIT community member who comes in here. Every single thing that I've wanted to do with music, <laughs> it's here at Lewis, here at MIT. So that's like pretty cool, I think. Thank you.